This is just a short uh, lecture just to give you an idea of the history of aerial photography. Um, this is um, um, a meander at um, Dead Horse State Park in Utah. And it's just there because I think it looks pretty. Okay, so the first camera um, is the Camera Obscura. Camera is Latin for room. Obscura is Latin for dark. So it's just a dark room. And on the left, they've shown you um, a mock-up of this. Uh, it's a room, like a little shed. It's got a, um, a hole um, placed uh, in one of the walls. And then um, light from the outside is projected into the room onto uh, some kind of, of bright object. You know, piece of paper will work. Um, and the, um, the purpose of the camera obscura was to allow, um, artists to, uh, draw or paint with correct perspective. This was before the principles of perspective drawing were understood. And this allowed them to project an object onto a sheet of paper, draw it, uh, or paint it and then um, remove it so that it could be um, then further touched up. Um, this principle was then applied to the idea of similar idea of having light projected through a hole into a box. And um, this is one of the first commercially available uh, box cameras on the right created by uh, Louis uh, Daguer by Samuel Morse, inventor of the, the Morse code. Um, I think it's interesting that once practical photography had been mastered, um, people saw the potential for aerial photography almost immediately. Um, Gaspard Felix Tournachon, better known as Nadar, made the first aerial photos and they made the, he made these from balloons in France. Um, what I find interesting about this is at this time, um, photos were made on glass sheets, not paper. And so he would go up in um, balloons with glass sheets, which seems to me to be somewhat questionable from a safety perspective. Um, but pretty soon people were taking aerial photos all around. Um, on the bottom there, San Francisco, after the great earthquake of 1906, somebody went up in a balloon and took pictures. Um, to the right, we have Boston in 1860. So Boston as the eagle and wild goose see it. And then uh, uh, the military saw the potential of aerial photography. And so a lot of the advances uh, were military in nature. On the bottom left, we have a member of the Gallant um, Bavarian Pigeon Corps, um, which these were pigeons who were trained to fly over battlefields with a camera, as you can see, um, in a, a sort of a vest. And the camera was programmed to take a picture every few seconds. Pigeons would go out and come back. They develop the film and be able to see where um, uh, where opposing troops were. Um, this eventually uh, was um, moved into um, use of airplanes. So there you have a, an aerial camera from the First World War. Um, there was an awful lot of development from the First to the Second World War. So during the Second World War, there were large scale mapping um, uh, missions, not only for looking at troop positions, but for um, getting terrain and finding um, uh, uh, paths for airplanes to go from one area to another. Um, and there at the lower right is a, a surveillance photo of Cuban missiles taken during the Cuban Missile Crisis, which allowed um, the presence of the missiles to be verified and then the uh, removal of the missiles to also be verified. 